Hi, hello, welcome. So I painted these two side by side on um, a block and I cut them in half to show you, but I wanted to redo them. A lot of people said that looked like a fun little project and I thought so as well. Just to show how two different colors from the same palette can make really different moods and feels. Um, and so I've taped my paper into two quadrants. I, I reuse my tape, so that's why it's dirty. I'm using this spray bottle and I'm going to get my paper wet and then I'm going to use a flat wash brush to spread all the water out very evenly. This is rough paper from Meaden. It's actually, no, it's rough. No, no, scratch that. <laughs> it's bow hung paper. Wow. I've been using, trying different papers lately or different blocks papers. Um, usually I cut my paper and use Arsh. So I grabbed some red bud pigment. This is a newer to me paint. I work with her, her name's Brooke, she's awesome. And these are the first six, six colors I have from her and the only colors as of now. And I really, really love them. Um, I've been kind of slightly hesitant to use them because there are only six colors. And you know, I tend to use a lot of colors and grab here and there. So I challenged myself to stick with these colors and just play with these colors. So. I'm using these three colors kind of intermittently, just putting color in, kind of getting it on the paper. I'm not being super particular, but I'm making sure that I am using all these three colors to get variations. I'm watering some of it down. I'm taking some of it straight from the pan. I'm kind of just playing with all different levels of tonal value, of consistency of paint, of water. Uh, my paper is pretty wet, so if I get too much water at this point, it's not going to do too much to anything I have going on. Nothing's dry yet. It's really 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 wet so I can keep playing I'm using a like kind of a mini mop from Tintoretto they're one of my favorite paint brushes I'll absolutely link that in the description because I would highly recommend getting one of these paint brushes or two I have another one on the way I love it so much um, and flat wash you can use anything for that I I've had this brush for probably like 25 years it was like the very first um, brush I used in a art class I took years ago and ended up quitting because it was so hard <laughs> and they did not teach it the way I needed to be taught. So what I'm doing now is adding little bits of darker color down at the bottom, um, you know, cause clouds are bigger at the top and as they go down, they kind of get smaller and lighter and wispier, right? So I'm trying to make sure I'm incorporating some of the wispiness in, I have no rhyme or reason for my skies. I am such a chaotic go with the flow kind of painter that I never know what I'm really going to do. I am using that painting that you see off to the left as a guide. I'm not trying to replicate. As you'll see, I end up making this one much moodier and darker, and that's okay. Um, it's actually good, right? Replicating the exact same thing would be kind of boring without exploring some new things. So um, I did not dry the paper here, and I... Mm, you could dry the paper here, but I did want these trees to kind of be really farther back in the in this picture. So the reason that's why I think leaving it wet is the way I wanted to go. Although I could have done the trees wet and not so much that, that block of green below them. Um, here I'm showing how I like to take off some of the water on my brush. I like to roll the belly of my brush on a paper towel or a rag. Um, I use those rags over and over and over, so I'm not a huge fan of using paper towel, but since I use them so many times, they literally have to be disintegrating for me to throw them away, so <laughs> I use the heck out of them. I'm not a huge, <clears throat> um, you know, throwaway kind of uh material person. So this is what I do when I'm like, oh my gosh, this nothing's good is going here. I need to, this needs to blend out. It needs to do something better than I'm able to do with my brush alone. So I take a dry, not water, no water at all on that dry hockey brush. And I just use it to kind of blur everything and kind of blend it. So it kind of does a, a better thing that was going on. And I'm going to drop in more color <laughs> because I kept reminding myself, well, color dries lighter, color dries lighter. And I might've gone too heavy. And you know, here, yeah, see, I, I did think I went too heavy. So I'm taking paper towel and I'm trying to lift maybe some of the white out. And again, you can use a rag, you can use cloth, cotton, um, something lint-free would be best. You know, my paper towels do have lint. So I'm drying here so that I can um, make this foreground have quite a bit of negative space. And I want the white space. You could do an underpainting here, which just means that you're putting color first. So you could have um, added a color underneath this so that when your white pops through, it's not a stark white white like mine's going to be. It could be any color that you like. It could be a yellow, a gray, a blue, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat there. It could be a blue and it could be a river. <clears throat> so at this point, I don't mind the white so much um, because I did lose so much white in the sky. The light kind of lost that. So I felt like the white was okay in this one. Um, and... Uh, 
it, you know, this isn't a perfect picture. Um, by, by any means, it's not perfect. But the idea is for you to play, for you to explore, to maybe work with a limited palette, maybe trying um, whatever colors you have. Maybe you don't have a full palette from somebody either, right? Um, often I find myself only with a few colors from a maker. And, you know, I feel a huge urge to go buy them all because, not all, but, you know, a more a more comprehensive palette because, you know, it's hard not to work with a yellow, say, right? And so I am sticking with these six colors. And uh, so, you know, that can be challenging in itself because you're feeling maybe a little pressure to use these correctly, or at least I am feeling a little pressure to use these correctly. And there is no correct, you know, it's just my own, my own brain doing own silly things to me. So embrace it all, embrace what you're doing. Um, what you're doing is perfect because you're learning and you're trying different things. I did switch here to a script liner brush. It's, um, it's, I'm coming back around to this brush. It's not a brush I would recommend because it's half animal and half synthetic and I'm not an animal hair user, but I've had it for so long that I already have it. So I'm going to, you know, continue using it just because I already have it. Um, but I wouldn't buy another one because of the animal part. I mean, you're free to, you know, obviously do what you like, but I do like to keep animals off my brushes. I don't think that's really fair. And they make plenty of synthetic nowadays and they're amazing. Um, 95% of my brushes are synthetic. I only have a few that were, like I said, before I knew better. Um, not sure why I didn't know better. Anytime you see that tool, that's my heat tool. I love that tool. Best $10, $11 I've ever spent um, <laughs> within my little art supplies and I got a lot of our supplies, <laughs> but I love that heat tool. It saves me so much time, especially when there's lots of layers. You know, if you're doing anything from this writing desk, Colby, she does a lot of layers. You're definitely going to want a heat tool. You can use a hairdryer. I prefer a heat tool. And so these trees, I'm using a script liner, like I said, and I'm just making a line and I'm literally dancing the brush back and forth like a triangle down from the top of the tree, right? I do my line every single time. It's a habit of mine. I, I don't make trees without that line. I mean, you're gonna wanna try trees all different ways and what works best for you and what brush works best for you. Right now, I've been trying to train myself to use any kind of brush I pick up, but I still prefer, I work small though, right? So I do prefer a very pointy, smaller brush to make my trees. And I like a little bit of a belly on it. Otherwise you're just running out of paint so darn fast, right? You're, you're dipping every other second. And I'm still dipping a lot. So um, it is what it is. And I am making the trees darker as I get closer. As you can see, those green ones are much darker. And again, less water, more paint. Um, I'm mixing those two greens together because one's a lot lighter and then one's more of a darker color. And then at last, I'm just trying to use straight of that um, darker pigment there on the right on that second row. And if you want to know the names of these, this, this palette is called The Secret Garden. And I love this palette. It's very pretty. I didn't choose it. She just sent it to me. Um, it might not have been a one I would have chose on my own just because, um, <clears throat> I don't know. It's not as broad, I think, as I would I would choose on my own, but I am super happy she sent it to me because it pushed me to use colors I normally might not gravitate towards. And that's, I think, part of the exciting thing. Like, you know, should I, should I, oh, you know, be very specific on what I want from people? Not necessarily because I think it's kind of fun to be surprised and get something that maybe, again, like I wouldn't choose on my own. And so it pushes me beyond, beyond my normal comfort. And I think that's a great thing. And, it, you know, and I don't know, I just don't think you can go wrong with trying things that you're not very used to. And, you know, does it always make the perfect painting? Absolutely not. Certainly not. And so I'm adding some birds with this script liner. Um, the script liner gets them really nice and fine. I like more of a hint of bird <laughs> than like big dark birds, right? And I usually do them in odd numbers. And so, okay, I, I've wrapped that one up and I'm moving on to the second one. And so I'm going to kind of do the same thing. I'm going to kind of replicate it. But you'll see this one I do switch up a little bit in the end. And I wouldn't say I, I can't decide, honestly, which one I like better. So you'll have to let me know if you prefer the first original one on the left or the one I'm painting now. Um, there's reasons why I prefer one over the other. And then there's another reason why I prefer the other one over the other. So it's really hard for me to be like, mm, that's the reason. So for this sky, I am mainly using two colors. I'm using that aqua-ish looking color, mint color. I'm not sure what you want to call it. I know sometimes names can be very personal of what the colors are. And I'm using a bit of that um, lighter green and I'm kind of going between the two. I'm also using some like palette mud is what I call it, right? Palette 
palette leftovers from painting the last one with the trees and I'm just kind of dropping this in here and there. I use that mint color as kind of a base and then I'm using that green as the clouds and I'm just kind of dapping my brush around. There's no, again, no rhyme or reason. I have no true method. Um, I just like to vary the color and vary the sizes and try not to, like on that one on the left, I feel like some of them are stacked a little bit odd. I like more variance, more and more organic feel versus like, you know, and I tend to do that. I tend to get darker on the sides and then the middle has some weird leftover space. I'm working on that. I'm a work in progress. <laughs> I'm a forever beginner. I tell you, a forever beginner. I feel some days that um, I will just be here and that's okay. I feel probably for me, it's where I learn the best. Like if I was better, I'm not sure I would be as open to learning. I'd probably just want to do what I do. And if I was really good at it, stick with it. I don't know though. Who knows? I'm not. So, <laughs> all right. I'm starting technically on the foreground background. So my sky is um, done. Both those skies I worked to about three quarters of the way down the paper. And I did pull the water all the way down to the bottom. Uh, I just thinned it out. I, I mean, I didn't use a lot of color. I just, you know, made it really, really light wash. And so that you're, I'm not getting funny lines, you know, and the paper was wet from before. So I just made sure again, that it was really wet. And so that's a good way to make sure you're not getting any kind of harsh lines because you don't really want harsh lines. They're not the end of the world and they can really work with some situations, but these two pieces I feel like have that more misty, uh, not even misty, more soft quality. And so this tree line in the back, I'm not making trees. I am just making lines and with that very fine script liner brush, I'm just making lines and letting those lines suggest trees. Now the second row I am actually making, it's dry now, I dried it with my heat tool. I'm actually making tiny trees with my script liner. And they're not perfect trees. There are more suggestions, right? Suggestive, they're suggesting a line of trees and you know, you these don't have to be perfect because nobody's going to stare at that back line of trees and dissect your tree, your tree shapes. It's just making the eye know that these are a little bit closer than the row, be, row behind. And I could have gone a little lighter. Um, I could have varied, you know, gone a little bit lighter. The idea is you want to go light, light, and then get gradually get darker to the foreground, right? And so on my pieces, I don't do a great job of that. I could have done a much better job. But again, this is just play and practice for me. So I'm not super crazy about um, you know, doing that part of it. I was playing with these colors, um, playing with this paper, playing with these brushes and just exploring. And I don't get too crazy with following rules. You absolutely can. If that's something that means a lot to you, it, you know, for me, there really are no rules. The rule is just to have fun, enjoy yourself, explore, push yourself if that's what you want to do. And if for the day you don't need to be pushed, then just stay in your comfort zone, right? Each day can be different. It doesn't, you don't have to be like, oh, you know, Amber said to push myself, push myself. That's that's just if you feel like you want to that day, right? You don't have to. Never, ever, ever do you have to. Do what makes you happy. Do what you enjoy. And do what feels right in the moment. You, you know what your body needs. And um, the part of the joy of painting for me is following what feels right and what my body, my mind and my body want that day. If I need to chill out and just watch YouTube, watch a YouTube painting and paint my own and listen to the voice, that's sometimes I do that. Sometimes I'll turn on, you know, a, just a waste of time Netflix show. <laughs> so, you know, do what you need for that day and just have fun. And, you know, I'm not here to exactly tell you how to replicate this, the, these two scenes. I'm here to share my passion of creating, of just painting. And you can see me fumbling with this line right here. I'm not getting that paint to move down. I didn't use enough in the first place. I'm not getting to spread how I, I want it to. It's too light, right? I need more of that green to just pull down. And so I'm dropping in some more here. And you can just drop it in that line and then you can use your brush and pull it down. And, and you'll see me do that. And it, you know, again, it's not perfect. It doesn't have to be. No one says it has to be. And guess what? You can still post it and perfect and all. And that's okay. I mean, all you got to do is look at my feed and you'll see <laughs> that there is so much imperfection and it's okay. Um, I love going back and seeing um, my, my little insights pop or my archives pop up from last year, from three years ago, from two years ago. And, you know, my growth is absolutely slow and that's okay too. It, it You don't have to you know, turn amazing overnight. And, you know, for a lot of us, it doesn't happen that way. It takes years. Um, and that's just sometimes what it is. It is what it is, right? 
Uh, I wish that I was the kind of person that it was faster for sometimes, but that's just not my path. That's not my journey. Um, oh, so that was a good point. What I'm doing here in the middle of drying, I often do this. <laughs> I don't know why I just don't turn my heat tool off. So I realized that I was drying that I had a really harsh line. And at first I thought I was going to leave it cause I kind of liked it. And then I realized everything else was so soft that it just didn't work. So I took a very, um, lightly damp brush, right? I took most of the water off and just kind of smeared that harsh line around until it went away. Not a lot of water, in my brush. Okay. It was a very, very thin amount and that will often work for that. And I invite you to, again, try all the different brushes for your, tree, for your trees. Um, just because I say something works for me. Again, I say this every single time I know, but it might not work for you and you might not enjoy it that way. So try all your brushes, try the dagger, try a cat's tongue, try a liner, try a, a round, try a size twos, try a size four. If you work bigger, you're also probably able to use different brushes, right? Um, some of my Tintorettos have such a fine tip that I could probably use a size zero, which is actually a larger size that I'm used to. And sizes of brushes are not universal. So if you're just starting out, um, you'll want to check the actual in, um, details of the brush and see what size it actually is and look at a ruler and compare it to what you have already. And so, yeah, I don't know why they do that. It makes it nice and confusing. And again, with these trees, I am making my straight line down the middle and I am just going back and forth back and forth. I'm doing them fast. I recently heard someone say, slow down for trees, slow down, and it will not work for me. It might work for you. And if it does, awesome. Um, go slow. Do honestly what works for you, right? I can't stress that enough. And you know, some people be like, oh my gosh, I can never paint trees that fast. They just look, they don't look good. And maybe mine don't. And that's okay. Remember, I'm just suggesting trees. And so I'm, I made a little bit of a more of a slope than I wanted on these. So I'm just trying to put in some color and make my, my hill make sense. I made a little slope of trees and it might not make exact sense. Again, I'm not trying to exactly duplicate the picture on the left. I'm just using it as a guide to kind of, um, recreate these for you, you know, in a demo versus, um, how I did them in a reel before. And, um, and just share with you kind of my thought process as I paint and, less so more of how, because I honestly think with trees, there's not so much an exact how you just really, you have to put in the mileage. <laughs> you have to paint them over and over and over. And eventually, so see, I, I switched my rigger here. This is a, my Polina Bright tree brush, my official tree brush. I use the strip, the script liner for the smaller ones. And this one I like to use for my slightly bigger ones. Um, you, you can do whatever you like and again, use any brush you like, but this one does seem to work for these ones up front. And I have kind of, I wouldn't say destroyed the tips on most of my Polina Brights, but I have, um, you know, painted a lot of trees, thousands, thousands of trees. I, I'm, I'm not kidding. I lost count after a thousand. So, um, you know, I've really have practiced and, and tried and I still try and I still practice. Last little tree friend right here on the side. That one a little thick, but that's okay because trees aren't perfect, not to mention then we're going to use our water to help make a little mound of of ground here and just spread that all the way out this way and then all the way out this way. Then while it's still wet, we're going to take our little grass, our little darker color, and we're just going to add some little sprigs of dark in each corner down here. Maybe a few up here by the trees. Few on this side. Um, if we wanted to, we can just add a few random ones here. We could add a little bit of darker down here just to kind of sprout something. Um, this whole area right here, let's take a look at it. I'm going to stand up and look. We could leave that plain. Um, let's take a look at the other one. I did. I'm not trying to replicate this exactly. I just did want to test myself to see if I could potentially, um, you know, do another painting like that. I'm actually going to add two more trees on this side. I am felt propelled, compelled, <laughs> uh, propelled or compelled 
to just add two little trees over here. Um, they're not in the other one, but I think that when we're painting this kind of stuff, we should do what we want when we want. And I always have odd numbers, or I try to have odd numbers, so I'm gonna have to do two because I have three already here. So the only thing that did do, it kind of took away from this kind of cool thing I had going on here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pick up some of this paint um, because I did like what I had going on here. Um, then what I can do is just add a few more little dark ones. And what I will do, because I feel like this is lacking a little bit, take a little bit of my dark paint and just drop it in the space of this tree right here. There we go. And I'll stand up and look. We do want our trees up closer to be darker, right? They're, um, they're the closest trees. You're gonna see the most detail out of them and you do want them to be, you know, a shade or two darker. And that's where we talk about tonal value and um, making sure that you're keeping things in the back lighter as you move forward. You're just going slightly darker and darker each time. And um, I don't think you have to get too crazy to make that be effective personally. And let's add some birds in our sky. And I do like the flock that I have going on here, this general shape. I'm just using something I already have mixed up in my palette that's left over. It's just some dark something of mixed something. <laughs> Not important. Just the darkest stuff you can find. I'm just going to make sure I have a very good liquid. Nothing, nothing, um, uh, you know, bulbing up. That's not the word. Uh, <laughs> bubbling or pooling at the end of my brush. So my brush is, you know, just the tip there is, has the paint on it. It's not doing anything crazy. And so we're just gonna add, usually I go in kind of three, so we'll do three there. We'll do a few over here. I don't love that color right there, so let's just put a bird in it to sort of distract maybe. Another bird here. I'm just making super simple V shapes up dead, upside down and right side up. And let's do a few more and we'll make them really smaller and maybe a little bit lighter so that they're way up high and farther away. And then maybe one more out here, just trying to get away, okay? So we have three sets. Let's make an odd, one more little odd bird because now we have a kind of an odd number here or an even number, three sets of three, but it's too even. So let's odd it up. <laughs> and let's hit it with the heat tool one more time. Then what we're going to do is just take our darkest. And if you get too much water, again, just, just roll your brush around on your paper, your rag, your towel, whatever you use. I use a combination of rags and towels. I prefer towels. Um, I use these over and over though, as you can see. So I use them for a very, very long time. Um, we did buy that roll and it's lasted me, I don't know, a year now. So I don't use them very often. I rarely get brand new ones. And I just, I even took that to Costa Rica. I folded up a bunch and put them in my pack, in my bag to use. And so I'm just gonna add a few little, few little, greener pieces right here, just to kind of make that. And I'm just gonna blur that a little bit because I did kind of make it look a little funny there. A little too, too particular. All right, and I think that's it. I'm gonna stand up one more time. I'm gonna look at them. I do kind of realize I like this white and that's okay. That's what you're, you're learning, exploring. So replicating the exact same thing. I may not have learned much, but by replicating it or duplicating it or playing with it and then changing a few small things you know like the sky i went a lot deeper a lot more rich and it's it's i don't know if it's my favorite i like the subtlety of these i really like the subtlety subtlety of these first two and these ones i feel like i might have gone more intentional more bold more i don't know because i knew i was doing it probably these were just very done very carefree these were done you know for you with you in mind and helping you know to explore and so i feel you know that we learned, I learned something though. And that's, that's always the goal for me is to learn something is to, I do save my tape. So you'll see me placing it off to the side. I can use it as many times until it starts leaking. Once it starts leaking badly on the sides here, I throw it away. Um, like this one leaked. So I toss this one to the side and you could trim them down. I'm not particular. Uh, all my stuff's practice. So I'm not particular if I, if they leak or bleed, leak, bleed. So for me, it's not a huge deal. But those other ones didn't really bleed and so I'm gonna keep those tapes. And what I do is um, I did draw a line down the middle as my divider so that I can mark my tape and I just erase that mark off. Um, and I'm going to, let's see if we can do a, a side by side. Okay, so there's always, you know, 
like Colby from this writing desk, she always does loves and loved and learned, right? I love um, the color I have here in this new one, um, but I also love the subtlety there. I love the bold, but then I love the subtlety, right? So I guess I appreciate them both for different reasons. Um, I do like that I feel maybe I have more tree detail here. On the moody sky is kind of fun. I don't know. It's like you just turned it up a notch, right? You took these and then just turned them up a little bit. And this is what you came up with. I do think I prefer the white space there. But I don't know. This could work too. And I love, I love the negative space on these too. How it just like looks like there's a path or a valley or whatnot. So I hope you enjoyed these. And I hope that you perhaps um, will go out and try something. Maybe take your own two pieces and do them. Maybe paint these. Maybe not, I don't know, but I hope that you uh, enjoyed and I hope that next time I'll see you again and we can paint again and I'm hoping to up my game and get back to the weekly tutorials because I miss them and I want to get them out there and I want to show you how accessible painting can be to anybody who maybe has never painted or maybe who is learning or maybe is a slow beginner like me, forever slow beginner, that's what I am. So. Hoping to share that with you all. All right. Thanks for joining. Bye.